Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about some of the team needs that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers still have going through the rest of this offseason after the first wave of free agency. Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have done a lot, and I mean a lot of good work to continue to build this roster via re-signings, via free agency signings, even with a trade or two, the Bucks have done a lot of work for keeping this team competitive and keeping open that championship window. It all started with the return of Tom Brady, the most important move of the offseason, no question about it. But the Buccaneers still kept very busy in terms of bringing back some of their own players, guys like Ryan Jensen, Carlton Davis, Chris Godwin, Leonard Fournette, and Will Golston all re-signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and are going to play for them this upcoming season. The Bucs also added a few new faces, two in the case of free agency signings in Russell Gage and Logan Ryan, and one via trade with the acquiring of Shaq Mason for a fifth round draft pick from the New England Patriots. It still blows my mind that that trade actually happened. However, despite all of the fantastic great moves that this Buccaneers front office has done so far up to this point, they still have some work to do. There is still some team needs on this roster and we're going to talk about some of those needs in this video today. So let's start off with this. Running back two, running back three. The Buccaneers need a new running back two and possibly a new running back three. Let's talk about this. So the Bucks lost Ronald Jones in free agency to the Kansas City Chiefs. I've seen a lot of mixed opinions and reviews on Ronald Jones and his time here with the Bucks. But the point still stands is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers need to find a replacement for Ronald Jones. I actually put on my community tab here on the channel a poll. How would you replace Ronald Jones at the running back two position? We had a very healthy amount of votes and it was pretty split. A lot of people said that they would draft a running back. A lot of people said that they would re-sign a guy like Giovanni Bernard. A lot of people said that they would go out and sign a new guy in free agency. That was the three main answers I saw from everybody who voted in that poll. And you can still vote in that poll if you want to. Again, on the community tab here on the channel. But when I look at how to replace a running back to specifically, there are two things that come to mind. Number one is giving a guy like Keyshawn Vaughn more snaps. That was another popular answer in that community tab poll. Giving Keyshawn Vaughn more opportunities, I think is a very likely option for the Bucks in terms of finding that next running back to guy. Bruce Arian seems to be very confident in the skills and ability of a guy like Keyshawn Vaughn. And based off of some of the work that we've seen from the young running back so far, it's definitely a possibility that he could slot right into that running back two role and overall do a very, very decent job. I think that Vaughn is going to get a good amount of opportunities in this upcoming training camp in this upcoming season and he may be one of the first options the Bucks look to in terms of a guy who can step up and take over running back to duties however if they do decide to add another running back or two in the mix I think that the draft is going to be a very very strong possibility here you look at all of the running backs that they've been talking to, be it at the NFL Combine, at the Senior Bowl. The Bucks have been doing their homework on running backs. Isaiah Spiller has been a name that has been brought up a couple of times now. And I think it is not a guarantee, but it is definitely, certainly, definitely, certainly, it seems likely that the Bucks are going to look at that running back position in the NFL draft and heavily consider drafting a guy to try and be that running back three, try and be that running back two. And I think that, you know, a guy like Keyshawn Vaughn, maybe a rookie running back, maybe you go out there and get a veteran like a guy like David Johnson. Those are the types of guys who are going to fill that running back two role and that running back three role as well. You then look at the starting left guard position. Right now, as it stands, with the retirement of Al Ali Marpet, the Bucks don't have a clear picture as to who is going to be that starting left guard. They traded for Shaq Mason. Shaq Mason plays right guard 
for the Bucks. What are they going to do at left guard? Well, they did re-sign Aaron Stinney to a very, very affordable deal. They may try and give him first crack at that left guard position as the starter. But another theory I've seen a lot of people talking about is drafting a guard in the first or maybe even the second round of the upcoming NFL draft. Zion Johnson has been an incredibly popular name amongst Bucks fans. In my most recent draft, I took Darian Kennard in my mock draft in the second round. I think that much like the running back position, this is another position, the starting left guard group, that the Bucks may look to the NFL draft to address, bring in somebody who could possibly compete with a guy like Aaron Sinney and go from there. Maybe they sign somebody in free agency, maybe they don't, they are a little cap strapped right now, but you know, with the cap gymnastics, the work that Jason Light has been able to do this offseason, it would not surprise me if they were able to get some incredibly good bargain in free agency. There's still a lot of good guards available, maybe the Buccaneers could scoop one up or they could very well draft somebody in the first or second round in this upcoming NFL draft. And then you look to the tight end one and the tight end two positions. In the case of tight end one, I think it is more likelier than not going to be Rob Gronkowski. It seems like he is probably going to come back. I know that there's our, there is uh, some discussion, some talk out there that he is not decided right now as to whether or not he will or will not play football. Completely understandable. I think Rob Gronkowski will get as much time as he wants to make that decision, but I do think ultimately Gronk will give it one more year and come back and play another season with Tom Brady. If they do not get Rob Gronkowski back, I highly, highly think that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will sign somebody in free agency before the NFL draft rolls around to try and build up that position group before the NFL draft. I think that if Rob Gronkowski does decide to retire, they would almost immediately sign somebody in free agency. There's still a good few tight ends out there who could do a serviceable job as a tight end one. In the case of tight end two, you do have Cameron Brait there, but I also wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks did end up drafting somebody in the middle rounds of this upcoming NFL draft. They have been talking to a lot of tight end prospects as well at the Combine, at the Senior Bowl. They have been doing their homework on this upcoming young group of tight ends. And I definitely think that they will possibly look to bolster their position group there with a potential draft pick in this upcoming draft as well as maybe a free agent signing as well. On the defensive side of the football, left end has pretty much been secured now with Will Golston, but there is still a question mark at right end. Will and Dominican Sue re-sign with the Bucks. I think that it is possible, but it's not a guarantee much like in the case of what I've been saying already, the draft may be something that the Buccaneers use here. Obviously, they only have one first round draft pick, so we'll see if they want to spend that on a left guard or a right end, something along those lines. I think that those are the two likeliest options right now at this point, but I also think there is a legitimate possibility that Indomitian Sue does re-sign with the Bucks. If he isn't able to re-sign with them, maybe they go out and get a very solid, very capable veteran like a Calais Campbell. We will see, but I think that this is possibly a position that the Bucks may look more towards free agency rather than the draft, because again, you only have so many draft picks that you can use and expect to get starting caliber players out of that, those draft picks that are available to you. Final couple positions here, outside linebacker three, that is still a thing that needs to be addressed. Who is going to be the third pass rusher? It was Joe Tryon last season, but he seems to be the new starter now with the departure of Jason Pierre-Paul. Carl Nassib was just released by the Las Vegas Raiders. Could he be a guy that slots into that third pass rushing position? I think that that is, again, a very legitimate possibility. There's also some very good backup pass rushers that are still out there in free agency. I don't think the Buccaneers would go the draft route with this position group. I think that they would want to bolster it with just solid, capable veterans that they are able to get at a pretty reasonable cost. Again, Carl Nassib being a guy who I would not be surprised with 
at all if he returned to the Bucks. Also, they could look to just give Anthony Nelson more snaps. I have personally been impressed with Anthony Nelson the more I have seen him play for the Bucks, and I think the coaching staff does agree. Maybe he may get more opportunities coming up here this season. Then you have the middle linebacker three, Kevin Minter. He is an unrestricted free agent right now. They could very well re-sign him, or they could bring somebody in this upcoming free agency period as well. You also have the draft. I don't think that they would spend a high draft pick on a middle linebacker three, but it's definitely a possibility. You could also see guys like KJ Britt and Grant Stewart get more playing time. The coaching staff was very impressed with how they did last season. That could have definitely earned them more playing time moving forward. I think that free agency is definitely on the table for this position. I think that Definitely giving more playing time to guys like KJ Britt and Grant Stewart is on the table for this position, but I don't think the draft is going to be a heavily considered option here. Again, much like in the case of defensive line, I think the Bucks want more solid veteran play or some of the young guys that they already have in that position group to fill in the gaps and be able to provide that quality backup production that you have been expecting from that group the past couple of seasons. Finally, though, you do have secondary depth, which I know is going to be on everybody's minds. I've seen a lot of people complain that the Bucks have not done enough at the cornerback position. I do agree with that. I do disagree with that a little bit, I should say. They did re-sign Carlton Davis on a long-term deal. They still have Jamel Dean. They still have Sean Murphy Bunting. But I will agree that they could stand to add another cornerback or two. Yes, they have Ross Cockrell. Yes, they have a couple of guys that could come back. Guys like Dee Delaney and Pierre Desir. But I want to see more simply because of the sheer number of injuries that occurred at that position for the Bucks last year. A similar thing could be said for that safety position as well. Yes, you have Logan Ryan. Yes, you have Antoine Winfield Jr. Yes, you have Mike Edwards, but you could always stand to add more at the position. Again, this is something that I would see the Bucks may be looking to address in free agency, especially for the cornerback position. There's always a lot of solid cornerbacks that are out there that you could add for a relatively reasonable cost. But I also wouldn't be surprised if the Bucks spent a fourth round draft pick, maybe even a third round draft pick on a cornerback or a safety if they felt the right guy was available. So there you have it, folks. Those are kind of, those are most of the team needs that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers still have on this roster currently and some of the ways that they could address those needs. What do you think? What do you feel the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team needs are? And how would you like to see the team address said needs? Give me your thoughts and opinions on all of that down in the comment section below. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys so much for 15,000 subscribers. We did hit that milestone today and it feels really, really good. I am very happy to have been talking with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers community now for Many, many years now growing the community. It's great. You know, I've been a Buccaneers fan so, so long. And, and it just feels great to grow the community. It just feels great to talk about the team I love and will continue to love and make more videos about. So again, thank you guys so much for 15,000 subscribers. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. Let's just continue to grow the community together and continue to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers together. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.